Thank you, Rian and IPIC for having us once again. Uh, being a public speaker for 45 years, every time is the first time, especially when you speak English and you failed English at school. So uh, if I make a grammar mistake, you will appreciate that. It's a huge effort from my side. Uh, I'm so glad that Rian understands Luke 11 to invest in good soil. God says and encourages us to identify good soil. And this is what this whole evening is all about. Good soil with talented people. So then God can give us 30, 60, and 100 fold, fold, not percentage, 100 fold return on our giving, our time, our effort, and our gifts. Now, Lucas Korf has a team, and the super girl, Shanari, sitting at the back, we call her super girl. And he's got super duper kids, and we love him. And in the 20 years that I've learned him, he's, a, he's not only a survivor, he's a conqueror. He's a faith warrior of God. And we, we respect him, we appreciate him. I am Vainant Window, and 35 years I've uh, been in ministry. But 10 years ago, I had an encounter, and I started Bible Revival for a specific reason. And if you don't know the Bible as product, a product, if you call this a Bible, the product Bible is the most needed product in the world, the least available. And chatting to Lucas over the years, he began to understand that this is important. And it's made it his mission and vision to restore God's word, not only through his ministry, but also in helping other ministries do that. If you don't know this, only 700 million Protestants in the world that call themselves Christians. 500 million of those 700 million don't have Bibles. This is facts, it's scientific facts. And this is true. Lucas understands that. So he is now launching the What Did Jesus Say Bible? Because 70% of research in the South African student market, 70% of all children in our schools don't have Bibles. So it's not an easy product to provide because paper is expensive, but audio-wise, Lucas is going to create something unique because he understands the need. So good soil is what it's all about. So I'm blessed to have Lucas into my life, and he enriches me, encourages me to reach to bigger dreams, greater support, and support greater opportunities that he is creating doing God's will. God's vision, Lucas, always brings provision, as you all would know. When God's involved, He helps us along. God bless you. We're encouraged with your ministry. Okay, so let's start with the presentation. When I was a young man and still had a lot of hair, I was once confused to be Him. And as an uncircumcised Philistine without Jesus, I played along. It was a wonderful night. And out of that time, a few months later, I was in a little car accident. Car rolled, fell on my back, broke my pelvis in five places, burst my bladder, internal bleeding, rupture of the spine, and I had an encounter with God. In this place, in this accident, the girl that I was in the accident in asked me, do you know Jesus? Of which my answer was twofold. I had a vision of the religious Jesus. Now rem remember, the rel religious Jesus is a blind man in a dark room looking for a black cat, which is not in the room and he finds it. There's a big difference between religion and relationship with the living God. And when God started birthing within me, the revelation of the Christ, the Word, became evident in my life. I started studying the Bible. I started meditating upon the Bible. The Bible was my best friend. And I also started specifying my wife. There she is. On the beautiful Bloemendal Mountain, that photo was submitted to Eisgenoot. They rejected it and said it's photo edited. The photographer was crying like a baby lying on the floor and I said, get yourself together. We got photos to take and my wife paid a big bunch of money for this. And in that time, we fell to plant Turning Point Church. Me and my little wife started this church and it just exploded. One of our key principles was that little photo on top. 
I was trusting for a baby with my, with my woman, with my wife. That photo is not there by, per accident. It's there on purpose. Because as a man of power with a lot of authority and, and, and healing evangelism stuff going on, I prayed for a lot of sick people and my wife got sick. And that was on the same mountain that I threw her ashes. I had a photo of that, but her father deleted it. So we don't have a photo of that anymore. A young kid found me in a mall as we were preparing to build this big youth center and get the word into the kids through extreme sport. And this kid said to me, where are you, pastor? And that was about a year and a half after my wife passed away. And I said to him, dude, I'm going through some emotional turmoil. And he said, well, get over it. You say to us in schools, if you stand for nothing, you fall for anything. You say to us, never, never, never give up. You said to us, stand. And he said to me, do the August without a saddle or a pole. In order of building the youth center in Parklands. And I took the challenge. He organized the bicycle and Professor Tim Noakes and Ryan O'Connor had a meeting or had a little radio comment, commentating session. And they, Professor Tim Noakes in his person said, physiologically impossible to do the August without a saddle or a pole on the bike. There I'm doing it on top of a crane while they were building Eden on the bay. That was the easy part. Doing the August without a saddle or a pole on the bike without being seated was a part of an clear. It was incredible, but we pulled it off, and we did it because I knew there were a whole bunch of kids waiting for me. There were also a bunch of kids waiting for me there at the bottom of this stupid thing. I did that for six hours standing on top of a crane without a saddle or a seat. I was throwing up a lot. The kids were thinking it's like the mist, Cape Town morning, but it was energized. And then God gave me an upgrade. That's my new wife, woman. God gave me an upgrade, the most beautiful woman ever. We make babies so beautifully. I'm telling you, we need at least 10. Look at those children. Then, that happened. The beatboxing audio Bible was born. One of the kids tapped me against the head when we gave them audio Bibles at school and said, dude, don't give me another one of these. Can you read it? He opened up the Bible. I checked it out. I could hardly read what, they said, what it said. He said, beatbox it. So we took our bullyproof campaign. We took Floyd Mayweather's mid workout and we did the beatboxing audio Bible. We took the actual beat of the actual combination of the boxing program. Then we did a standing. This was 500,000 audio Bibles, which was called Identity Audio Bibles, which was after the, if you're still with me, that was after the first audio Bible that we did, and we distributed that all across South Africa while we were cycling from Cozy Bay. Now, on that bike, you'll notice something very different about that bike. It's a tandem, no saddle or a pole on the thing. So we decided, why don't we cycle around South African coastline doing a Joshua Caleb vibe, taking territory and saying, this country is the Lord's, and I stand for Jesus. Yes, I do. I stand for Jesus. How about you? We stood all the way. I think all honor goes to my wife. She had to drive and take photographs. And Hink Kreiling, who was our videographer up Saker Bossy, we actually got someone that was here cycling with me that day. So we cycled all across that way while we were speaking at schools and speaking at corporates, creating awareness that we must get the audio word of God in the hearts and the minds of kids and it was ridiculous and unnecessary and as I stood every single day with cramps in places that I didn't know I had I knew it's for them that school specifically was a school they had an escort for me and said this guys are not going to respond there's an exit for you to get out of there that was just one of the one of the drones that followed me the thing nearly crashed into me that was quite interesting very scary then we decided to really get audio Bibles to more people. Let's interview some cool people and use their databases. That also didn't work. So we interviewed a lot of cool people with beautiful hearts, incredible experiences, beautiful, beautiful people with hearts after the kingdom of God. But people aren't there to meet your heart's desires. They're there to do what God tells them to do. And then we thought, well, man, thank you to Vainan to introduce me tonight. I also got introduced or got promoted or got set as the John Maxwell Youth Coordinator for South Africa because I thought if I can get that right, I'm going to get more audio Bibles into kids' hands in South Africa. Africa. That also didn't work. Then I thought, let me start a try world record. Most comments on a single Facebook post is 1 million, 1, 1 million and 1,552. So we said we'll do 1 million, 100 and 555 people to comment. If you just comment, we'll give you an audio Bible. Also didn't work. 
It was a cool attempt, though. It was quite a lot of fun. Then we thought, okay, so now we're going to take the audio Bible. What did Jesus say, audio Bible? Uh, let's narrate the entire word of every word Jesus ever spoke in chronological order so that it forms a story, and we put it in a Bible format so that kids can have it with a literal list of A to Z of kids experiencing certain emotions. And as they experience the emotion, maybe faith, and they go and tick on that app, and and the app starts speaking in the words of Jesus. And the words of Jesus starts encouraging him. So any topic on that specific topic, the kid starts to get motivated and inspired. You see, motivation is important. Inspiration is important. But if you do not activate it, there can be no power that flows. The word of God means nothing if not found in the hand of a kid or in the hand of a person, or in the heart of an individual. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And if we do not get it to the next generation, the next generation is our vision. And I end off with this statement, my mission statement that me and my daughter thought up. Love God, love people, love life, and live a life worthy of a legacy. Thank you. You've done a lot of crazy things world records, attempts, and, and, and. But I think what I actually want to know is, what's your heart? I think, to sum it up, and I'm waiting for that question, am I in good investment? No. Do not invest in, in me at this point in time. I've got people that can prove that's not a good idea at this point in time. However, I need to be the voice that I never had. So no one shared that with me. No one told me about it this Jesus. And I discovered it while meeting demons at, at the port of hell, 45 minutes dead in a car accident, and Iron Maiden tuned me, this is your destiny. And I chose the Jesus my granny told me about that's in the children's Bible. So as I discovered that, and as I started reading this, I realized, and I was just that type of personality, if it says it there, I'm hacking it. If it says to me, great is he that's in me than even in the world, I don't care what was said to in the Old Testament or what was said to in the New Testament. Thank you, Jesus, that's mine. So although that scripture is totally out of context for the first world record, great is he that's in me than he that's in the world. It wasn't meant for that, but I used it for that. So I have seen the word of God in my life. I'm walking on legs that are not supposed to work. I've done 18 world records on these legs, and I will continue to do world records as my wife allows me to. Some of them are un as, she's, as she allows me to. So for me, it's just the audible, the Bible, and, and Vainan's my, mo my motivator in that. Mm -hmm. That guy's distributed more Bibles than most churches in the country put together. So I'm just back to square one at my ripe old age, and I'm just saying, God, I've got nothing. So if you can use nothing, let's rock. And that's how we end off tonight, ladies and gentlemen. This is Lucas Korf and, um, well, Daily Faith. Spark TV. Give him a hand of applause. <laughs>